It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And up next, we'll see Jalen Hurts. He's coming off a nice week throwing the ball. Four touchdown throws. It's the Broncos and the Raiders. And it's kicking off next on Matt NFL 23. We find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Today we've got an interesting Week 11 matchup on tap between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Denver Broncos. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you look at our home side in this one. They know coming in, they've got to be at their best because they're facing one of the better overall defenses in the NFL. And this is not one of the better offenses around in terms of running the football. So they understand that they're going to be put to the test a bit. The big plays in the run game, they haven't been there of late. So maybe that means we'll see them shake things up a little bit. Some RPOs, some touch passes, some draw plays anything to try and gain a little bit of momentum. happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here comes the Raiders offense now onto the field. Leading them out, it's the third-year man out of Oregon, Justin Herbert. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an Had interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. They'll start out here with the option left. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Miles Sanders, first carry of the game. And taken down just shy of the 40. The numbers for Sanders last week, 13 carries, 62 yards. Just an all right day from him last week. He really didn't break out for the huge yardage he had hoped going in. I talked to him before the game, though, and he knows this is a new, fresh opportunity. He's put last week behind him, and his focus getting some extra yardage with every carry he receives this week. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Seven yards there and a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And if that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. They'll try the air now with Herbert. And that nearly intercepted on his very first throw of the game. Fortunate there, it's second down. Up the middle they go with Sanders. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. It's not easy playing the corner, is it? A lot of times you got to defend against the pass, but sometimes you have to play against the run. How about the job he did there, crashing inside to make that tackle for a loss? A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. Herbert off a of play action. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Waiting on it will be Richie James. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. 
Leading them out, the third-year player from Oklahoma by way of Alabama, Jalen Hurts. Tremendous production in college at two different universities, and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Still much more of a runner than a thrower, but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield. And don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And they'll start on the ground, ETN. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Now second and seven from the 23. Here's Hertz to throw. There's Chris Olave. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. The Broncos at 1-8 and eight now on the year. And they come in in just an absolute free fall. Losers now, Charles, of seven in a row. And I think this is where, in a locker room, a lot of the team looks to their best players and even silently asks for them to guide them out of this. You know, we've got to be better than what we've shown. We need you to lead us. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and that will bring up second down. Throwing his hurts. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. On first and ten, it's ETN. The numbers on the ground for ETN last week. 23 carries, 107 yards. And the way they ran the ball last week's game has to be satisfying to their entire staff because they're seeing not just a back gain big yardage, but they're seeing an offensive line really in sync. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. And they'll go again with ETN. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. If you start assessing what went wrong last week, Charles, and their loss, had nothing to do with the ground game. They ran it well. And you also have to say to yourself as a team, don't go away from what worked. That's not the reason the game was lost. Running the football over time when you do it consistently usually translates into wins. And they're hoping to do it consistently here. So here's a first and ten now in Raider territory at the 44-yard line. A give running right, ETN. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Hurts. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. Well, hang on now. We're going to pause here. We've got an injured player. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. A handoff running left is ETN. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Cameron Hayward getting upfield to make the stop. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Play action. Here's Hertz. Escaping the pressure right. And this one's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, it's Hertz. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will remain a scoreless game. So a long drive, 11 plays all told. But in the end, they come away with nothing. 
And what can you do from an offensive standpoint except pat your kicker on the head and say, get them next time. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. And they, on paper, Charles, no doubt they have the edge in this one. They are sitting with the AFC elite, and on the other side, they're down toward the bottom of the AFC. But you know what they say, especially at this point in the season, watch out for a trap game. And then he's got a man complete. It's a big play there for Vegas. 54 yards. Every defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. <laughs> Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop, though, isn't it? And when you think of an explosive play, most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They went zooming past that number there. They'll run with Sanders. And he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. Miles Sanders, his first touchdown on the year. And the Raiders will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. So the big play to kick off the drive set him up first and goal, and they're able to cash in right away on play number two. I think I'm starting to understand more and more when we get ready to do games and we meet with coaches, why they talk about big plays, explosive plays, and how it sets them up for success, because that's exactly how they're able to score on this one. We saw the touchdown, we saw the payoff, but of course that big, long chunk play is what got them in position. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails... Less of a field goal attempt for him. On second down, a run with ETN. And a short three-yard pickup gets him up to the 15. Burt sets up to throw it. Eluding the pressure right. Hard throw, incomplete. On fourth down, Matt Ariza is sent on to punt. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. There's the flash of Abdullah. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And it'll be Raiders football first and 10. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. And, you know, it's certainly a lot of football left to play. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're in first place in their division, looking really good and looking to be a threat come January. You know, are you one of those early holiday shoppers, partner? Are you one of those guys get your list done? Because I think about what every team has on their holiday shopping list right now. What's the number one goal? Make the playoffs. Number two? win your division number three and i think the biggest goal of all try to get the number one seed so you get that first round by and ensure you don't have to go anywhere in january and hopefully get to the super bowl that way i am willing to bet that he got a monster grin on his face when he saw what was happening man Cubs were so committed to denying a big throw that it pulled attention away from him and he had an easy lane to hit and hit it he did First down, it's Herbert. 
And this is caught. First catch for Keenan Allen. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. And that last throw right there putting him already over 3,000 passing yards now for the campaign. And given where we are in the season, Brandon, you have to think to yourself, if he stays healthy, I think 4,000 is a given. I think 5,000 is not out of the question if he stays high. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. A shotgun snap for Herbert. Man open is Keelan Cole complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Second and five. Here's Herbert. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. And finding Keelan Cole. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an inner touchdown Raiders. Miles Sanders with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Raiders are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead. Well, we know he has decent hands out of the backfield. That's the first time, Charles, they've targeted him in the passing game, and it pays dividends. And I love the design, too, because they kept him in the backfield, made the defense think run first before they swung him out of there. And you're right, with his hands, they might want to throw it to him just a little bit more. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And we see James, he will now return it and they'll bring it out to the 25. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. They find themselves in a good size hole here and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. Now ETN to start the drive. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. Here's second and seven now from the 28. ETN once more. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Flush to his right. And that nearly intercepted. Boy, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. But instead, it's fourth down. Abdullah to return. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. The Raiders offense coming back out onto the field. They've got things going their way early. 14-0 lead and the football. First and 10. Out of the gun, Herbert. Quickly a slant to Renfro. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Play action. It's Herbert. Across the formation, he's got a man. That's Allen. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A pickup of 10, and it's enough for a Las Vegas first down. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. 
second quarter now, and it's Las Vegas with the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Shotgun snap, and then the give to Sanders. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. Second down, back to Sanders. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves it with one yard to go on third down. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Well, they're currently the best in the NFL in converting on third down, so it was no surprise there that they picked that one up. And they've done it in many different ways throughout the season, Charles. Picking it up, running it, throwing it, just effective on third downs all year long. On first and ten, it's Sanders. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Herbert now. Got a man open. It's Darren Waller. He'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The offense on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to earn him yet another first down. Really? Really? Did we just see that? That's a big catch. One-handed, I might add, to pick up a first down. I was going to say, on third down for the defense, it's one thing to give up a reception. You just got to shake your head on a one-handed catch to pick up the first. Herbert on first down now. Left side here to Sanders. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Holding offense. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. They go back to the ground with Sanders. Give him five yards there, and it'll bring up second down. Another run here with Sanders. And a solid run down inside the 30. And two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. And break. The tight end's got it. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at 26. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be fourth down. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out and hope you can get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop it well short. Fourth down, and on comes the Raider kicker, Daniel Carlson. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Carlson able to put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So three points there, and they continue to build this first half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps, and the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. This will be fielded inside the five. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you down. I know, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. And you're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called a desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, 
but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They get a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. On second down, ETN once more. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Now here comes Abdullah on the return. Oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. A very good punt, but a 16-yard return. And it will be first to 10 as they take over. So here are the Raiders now to take over. Last week they got the victory against the Colts, so they lead this one as well as they begin things here first and 10. Play action this time for Justin Herbert. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. They'll run with Sanders up the middle. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Right back to Sanders on first down. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Justin Herbert looking to pass. The throw taken in by Cole. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. And coming out now, the Broncos. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot positions. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Slant pass complete to Alave. ETN up the middle. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Four yards the pick up, first down. These two teams met up earlier in the year, back in week four. And it was the visitors getting the win there, so they'll be looking for the sweep back here at home. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Another tote for ETN. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. From the 41, Hurts. This is caught. It's Kirk. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. A first down there on a pick up the 25. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to poke them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Hurts. They'll roll him out right. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. 
That's the first time he's called his own number, but he's got to be overjoyed with the results. He wasn't just going to settle for a modest gain. To me, he was determined to come through with a big message to a defense that slept on him in the pocket. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. Steps away to his left. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Hurts. And he rifles one incomplete. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. They'll try and throw for it with Hurts. And it's caught. Touchdown, Broncos! Christian Kirk, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Broncos' decision to go for it pays off with six points. That took a pretty big risk right there, going for it on fourth down. But hey, not only did they get the first down, forget about that, they got in the end zone. Yeah, because normally you're just thinking, can I get enough yardage to get it past the sticks and pick up a first down? Instead, they go for the end zone and get it done with no margin for error. Remember, fourth down, they went for it. Crosby with the extra point, and that'll cut the lead to 17 7. So the lead back down to 10 as things get a little more interesting, and the kick is away. Now, Doodle's going to stay put, and the drive will start at the 25. This offense returns to the field, and the former Penn State star, Miles Sanders, we're going to look at him. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter, been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable, and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here, because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. Well, now he's looking just to add to his totals. Back to the air, Herbert on second down. The Sanders has got it complete. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Herbert. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Denver's offense now set to go. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Throwing again on second and ten. Hurts. This is the tight end to Joku. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. He'll rifle this one deep right side. It's caught inside the 25. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. I think it's about time I took my eyes off of the secondary of the guys with the football. How about the offensive line on that snap? They took care of business. Absolutely, and when he can stay in the pocket like that, you're going to get big plays like we just saw. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and ten just outside the red zone. Hurt sets up to throw it. 
This is caught. It's Boyd. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. Here's Hurts to throw. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Raiders out in front. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things starting to get interesting in this final weekend before Thanksgiving. So let's see what's going on around the NFL. Let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. On now to a check on the next-gen stats for the Raiders in that first half. And the ground game has been a big part of why they have this big lead. And you have to figure they'll lean on it a little bit more in the third and fourth quarters. Meanwhile, for the Broncos, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football and they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Takes it at the seven. Now a hit and a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. Second half starts with a run by Etienne. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Straight ahead, ETN. And this will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory. Eight more yards this time coming off back-to-back -back first down pickups. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. They go play action with Hurts. And get that underneath ETN. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. From you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Boy, nowhere to go at all on that first down run as they will get to him behind the line of scrimmage. On second and 11 now. Hurts. He completes it to Boyd. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. Throwing his hurts. To the sideline, he's got the catch, and he kept the feet in bounds. Well done. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. 
He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. He was brought down at the 13 yard line. That's the game of three. From the gun, it's Hurts. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Now Mason Crosby on for the field goal. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. The kick by Crosby is good, and they're back with it, a touchdown. It's 17-10. to 10. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. On first down, it's Herbert. The open man here, Renfro. He's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Herbert off of play action. Underneath, he's got Bray. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Now it's Herbert. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window, he fired a bullet in there for the completion. Second down, back to Sanders. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. They're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. From the gun, Herbert on third down. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. And we get another look now at this Broncos offense. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. 
Max Crosby, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. He backed up into the end zone, and this is going to wind up a safety. Well, two snaps ago, I don't think anyone thought a safety was on the table, yet it happened. They caught him on back-to-back -back plays, breaking through the line. No amount of evading was going to save him from a sack on either play. And on the last one, he ran too deep into the end zone to set up the safety. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well, and they free kick it from the 20 now. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. And right now, these guys are shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Throwing on second and eight, Herbert. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Being chased out left. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. I think he's as fine with that incompletion as a quarterback can be in all honesty. He avoided his first sack of the game, and he did have a chance of connecting for yardage, just unable to on that throw. He'll send this one into the mile-high air, and it's a good one. James now to return it. Call that 49 yards on the punt. They do get seven back on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. And Denver getting set to take the field. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. Well, they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. To throw again on second down. Hurts. He'll drop that underneath to ETN. And he'll get up near the 35. They'll spot it at the 34. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And trying to shake free, but ETN cannot. The defense will stop him short. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. The Broncos send out their punter now. He's been terrific so far. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Raiders. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? From the 25 on second down, Herbert. He finds his target, Allen. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards to pick up there. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend.
Herbert setting up to throw on first down. Give him another one right back to Allen. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. A play fake, and now Herbert to throw. His throw incomplete. The Raiders on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. Here it's third and two. On third down, they'll run it with Sanders. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first, thanks to a flashy little spin move. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing, slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. First and 10, Herbert. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions, they are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Up the middle they go with Sanders. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. They'll go option on second down, right side. And he is going to lose yardage here. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. And he finds Waller in the end zone for a Raider touchdown. A great effort there, 28 yards. And the Raiders are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. Well, he's regarded as one of the best athletes among NFL tight ends, Charles, and it certainly was on display right there. And as we've seen this league continue to grow and develop, I think the tight end position is becoming harder and harder to defend because now it's elite athletes playing that position, not just the big guys who can block. How about his ability to get downfield and make plays against any defense? And they're able to ground it in there on the two-point try, and you and I were talking before the game. The two-point conversions from the 15-16 season, what has changed, what hasn't changed, partner? Yeah, I'll tell you what's changed is just your, no, your normal strategy because now you're either kicking the football with the ball on the 15-yard line or if you decide to go for two, they put it on the two-yard line. So what are you thinking as a coach? Do I risk it? Do I go for it here? Do I try and gain a strategic advantage and maybe go for two early? That's what people are wondering about. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as these guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So the Broncos coming out now. Facing a big fourth-quarter deficit here. Things not looking good. You know, this offense, though, they've been in the top half of the NFL so far this season. But in this one, where well, their defense has really struggled. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. On first and 10, it's Hurts. Able to slither by. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. This one the other fellow's had it year by year, partner. A league where just about everyone has someone under center who can get you with their legs as well as their arm. And we certainly had a nice display of that from both QBs in this game. And that continued with that first down run.
So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 38. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Now he lets it go deep for Kirk. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Hurts. They'll try and set up the screen to ETM. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. And the Raiders call on a nickel set here for third down. They'll set up to throw. And able to find Kirk complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. From the two now, second and goal. Once more, ETN pushing for the end zone, but he's not going to get there. They stop him just shy of the goal line. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Trayvon Diggs. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10, 5. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Raider defense delivers a score. Well, that's what you get, apparently, when you try to take on a Pro Bowl cornerback. And what a play there to make the interception and also bring it back for six. And he is so good that we've seen teams absolutely stay away from throwing the ball at him. Here, he's just reading the quarterback's eyes the entire way, makes a great play on the football, and turns it into six. Carlson off for the PAT. And the lead is now 24. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This taken in at the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Broncos about set to go on offense. It's now appearing that this losing streak is going to continue. You know, the coaching staff was confident that this was going to be the game to stem the tide, but that just has not been the case. Hurts now hoping to make up for that pick six. Open man is Kirk complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That's good for a But first down, Hurts. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. Looking to throw again on second down. Hurts. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Hurts sets up to throw it. Got an open man. It's Alave. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. They'll throw on first down with Hertz. He'll get that underneath ETN. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 42-yard line. Hertz throw into the hands of Kirk. And they'll work this down inside the 30. 13 more yards. That's another Broncos. Throwing his Hertz. Screenplay. Here's ETN. And he's going to be taken down at the 28 yard line. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to dinner.
Throwing again on second down. Hurts. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Here's Hurts to throw. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Going with their tight end on fourth. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17 yard line. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Now left side on the swing pass. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. Now they got to get to the line quickly. From the gun, it's Hurts. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. They'll try and throw for it with Hurts. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Raider D, they get the football back. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. And this one has gone pretty well to form. They've come in, had little problem thus far, and now they'll try to polish things off in the fourth. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Here's a run with Akers on second down. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. That one good for 13 and a Raider first down. This defense, Charles, they have unraveled here in the fourth. In a sense, it's like they're being pressed, like in a basketball game, and they just can't get the ball over half court. I mean, no matter what they do, they can't get off the field. They can't slow them down. They're just going up and down the field against them. Yeah, unraveling would be a perfect word for them. Sanders here as they run out of the gun. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. So this one a victory for the Las Vegas Raiders. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them in just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So for Las Vegas, the great run they've been on continues as they move to 9-1 and one now. And they'll get another road date next week as their opponents will be the Seattle Seahawks. Meanwhile, for the Broncos, add one more loss to the column. That drops them to a woeful 1-9 and nine so far. And they'll be on the road next week for a matchup with the Carolina Panthers.
Chief, I got 